Hi everyone, welcome to St. Mark United Methodist Church here in Greenwood, South Carolina. This is our River Street Campus worship service. During these unprecedented, challenging days during the COVID pandemic, we're gathering together virtually and we're glad that you're joined with us. We've come to pray, sing, and call upon God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Helper, and our Lord. We're glad you're with us. I searched the world But it couldn't feel me Man's empty praise Treasures to fade Never enough You came along Put me back together and every desire Is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, there's Lord, there's nothing 
Good morning and welcome to St. Mark and our Sunday morning blend service. We're here at River Street and as you can tell, we're virtual again. But it doesn't matter if you are on this side of the screen or if you're on the other side of the screen, we're here for one purpose, and that purpose is to worship the Lord. So in that spirit, I would love for you to share with me in our Apostles' Creed, because it is always a good and a joyful thing to share what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, as we go to our time for prayers of the people, I'm going to share with you a scripture, and then I will start our prayer, and then I'll just give you a brief moment of silence to lift up a prayer or a praise of your own, and then we'll join back together in our Lord's Prayer. The scripture for this morning is Psalm 62, 5. My soul waits quietly for the true God alone, because I hope only in him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be gathered together so that we can praise you and thank you for hearing our prayers. Lord, it is so difficult in this world of instantaneous notifications and news and just all of the noise, Lord, to wait quietly to pause. Yet we know that when we are intentional, when we sit down to read your word or to sit on our knees or maybe to even write in a prayer journal, Lord, you show up in a mighty way. So this morning as we pray, we ask that the Holy Spirit would clear out a space within us so that you can move. We ask that the scales be removed from our eyes so that we will have clear vision. We ask that you sweep all that clutter and information overload out of our brains so that we can have clarity. And Lord, we want you to allow us to have our spirits enlightened, to really pour into us, Lord, so that we will know your word and what you intended instead of what the world tells us that you intended. And Lord, we just ask this morning that you would redeem us back to you and help lift our eyes to the throne. So Lord, as we pause, we ask that you would hear the prayers of our people. And now, Lord, in a spirit of praise and thanksgiving, we lift before you the prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Yeah. 
Hi, kids. I'm glad to see you today. And I have a question for you. How many times should we pray every day? There's a story in the Bible about a young man named Daniel who lived a long time ago in a different country. And Daniel prayed every day, three times a day. Some of Daniel's enemies talked the king into making it against the law to pray, but Daniel kept on praying. And do you know what happened? That's right. They threw Daniel into a large hole in the ground filled with hungry lions. And what do you think Daniel did? Of course, he prayed and asked God to keep him safe. The next morning, the king hurried to the big hole in the ground and called out Daniel's name, Daniel. And do you know what happened? That's right. Daniel yelled back, I'm alive. God protected me. My mother named me after Daniel, after the Daniel in the Bible, and taught me how to pray. So remember, whenever we pray, God hears our prayers. You too can pray like Daniel three times a day, thanking God for the food you eat, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And whenever you need God's help, remember, every time you pray, God hears what you're saying and answers. Pray with me. Dear God, thank you for hearing my prayers. Help me to remember to pray every day. And thank you for hearing my prayers every time I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, kids. We are living in challenging times amid social unrest and a growing spread of COVID-19. It's good for us to be together virtually to help keep persons safe in our area, a growing hot spot as the virus spreads. So it's good to take time to listen to the words of Scripture. Our scripture today is Mark 1, 14 through 20. After John was arrested by Herod, who ruled the Jewish lands on behalf of the Roman interest, Jesus went back to the region of Galilee to begin to proclaim the good news of God. It's time. The kingdom of God is near, Jesus said. Seek forgiveness, change your actions, and believe the good news. As Jesus walked along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he met the first of his disciples, two brothers, Simon and Andrew, both fishermen, who were casting their nets into the shallow waters. Come, Jesus said, and follow me, and I'll send you to catch people instead of fish. Simon and Andrew left their nets and followed Jesus at once. When he had walked a little farther, he saw the sons of Zebedee, James and John, in their boat preparing their nets. Right away he called to them, and they dropped their nets and what they were doing and followed Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Mark is the first person to write the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. He skips over the Christmas story and begins his gospel when Jesus begins proclaiming the good news. It was John the Baptist, a forerunner, who pointed the crowds of the people to Jesus, saying, he is, the, he is greater than I. I washed you with water. He will wash you with the Spirit of God. The first story of Jesus that Mark chooses is this story of of calling the followers, Andrew, Peter, James, and John. When Jesus called, they followed. I've learned a lot about what it means to follow from a GPS device. 
Do you remember the first GPS devices when they came out? Long before the smartphone came out in 2010, GPS was a portable, sort of an add-on device. Remember the suction cups we would use to place it on the windows of a car? You'd plug in the cord in a cigarette lighter. Okay, I know some of you are still using that device these days, but they came back and they came out in the early 90s. And when they came out, they weren't always, should we say, dependable. I remember a trip four of us took together. It was a business trip out of town, and the driver was very proud of the GPS device. It took us about two hours to get there, and the GPS did a good job to get us to the edge of the town. And I remember we pulled up to a traffic light and the GPS indicated that we should go left. But I was the only one in the car who had been to the office building we were headed to. So I said, our meeting is just to the right, two blocks. Oh no, said the driver. The GPS has told us to go left. That's the way we're going. And it took us all the way around the city until we came back to that light just two blocks away. The driver said, don't say it. All I said was, I guess there's a lot of bugs in that new device. I learned that day what it means to be a follower. There's trust involved. Even when someone else speaks up and wants to change direction, to be a good follower, you must trust who or what you're following. Mark is telling us we can trust Jesus if we decide to follow Christ. So let me ask you, have you decided to follow Jesus? And what does that mean to you? Are you filled with the joy of the Spirit? Listen to the words of Isaiah 61.10. I'm overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God, he says, for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in the robe of righteousness. I'm like a bridegroom dressed for his wedding or a bride with her jewels. Did you hear the words? I'm overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God. Some of us are overwhelmed with all that's going on in our world today. And we need to remember all that God gives us, salvation and redemption. God does it through Christ. It's the good news of the gospel received by faith. God's grace is free for all of us. You can trust Jesus. And when you do, he gives you a new identity. It's amazing grace. God overwhelms us with joy. But God doesn't stop there. God comes to us and invites us to be followers of Jesus. It's a call, an outward focus, to live into the identity that he gives us through Christ. So what does it mean for us to follow Jesus in our world today? There are many number of ways that we can follow Jesus in the world today. I remember going to the beach when my boys were young toddlers and it, the, the tide had just gone out and the, the sand was wet. And I remember turning around and seeing two little boys trying to keep up by putting their footsteps in my footsteps in the sand. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Walking in his steps, treating others with the same love and compassion that he did, especially those overlooked in society. I think that's what it means to be Christian. Because God is gracious to us and calls us to follow. We embrace the values of Christ, love, inclusiveness, forgiveness, and helping others to heal. There's so much need in our world today, isn't there, for healing. Those of you involved in our health care, we salute you and pray for you, our nurses, our doctors, all the health care workers, those helping to get us through COVID, those helping to get the vaccine distributed. We're all vulnerable. And what a mysterious disease it is. Some have told me they tested positive and it had no effect on them. Others lost their lives soon after testing positive. 
There's an enormous number of lives lost, 400,000 in America. We closed our worship services back in December, and the virtual services of January are due to the outbreak in Greenwood. After that, I tested positive for COVID on January 3rd. The high fevers with the body aches left me with incredible fatigue. And I'll always remember the morning that I went to the doctor's office to a, a drive through testing site for a rapid test. I was sitting there and it was facing the bypass. Everyone was rushing here and there. And it's almost like I had pushed the pause button in my life. Time stood still. And the healthcare worker knocked on my window and said, you were right, you've tested positive for COVID. And I wondered, what was ahead for me? It was a difficult journey, and I'm thankful to the Lord who has brought me through this. But now I look at life differently. I look at others differently. And I look at myself as being a follower of Jesus. I pray for you healthcare workers every day. I pray for those who are struggling with the disease and hoping and, and praying that they'll be filled with hope as healing begins. And I pray for those who have lost loved ones, that they too would be healed, knowing there's life eternal through Christ. How can we make a difference today as followers of Jesus? I think that's an important word for us to remember. Let's not take life for granted. Let's do what we can with the gifts that God has given us to share with others so that we can make a difference in our world today. Pray with me. Gracious God, during these difficult, challenging times, I pray that you'd pour out your spirit upon us and that we would be overwhelmed with the joy of our salvation, the joy of your working within us, and that each day we would follow you to give to others your peace, your goodness, that we would be compassionate and kind and loving and find ways to share with them what you have given to us. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your life. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
say thanks again for joining with us today. We pray God's blessings upon you and yours as we all seek to follow Jesus each and every day. Stay safe, everyone, and join with us again soon.